Hello friends, we will be discussing the concept of three hmm. different or rather alternative ways of expressing the supply curve here or rather supply in terms. Now, just like the way we have understood demand, now it's time to understand the three different ways in which we can express the supply term or rather the term of supply here. Let's start with the explanation first. Now, supply of a good by an individual producer or firm or a market industry as a whole is conventionally expressed in three forms which are namely known as first a supply function, second would be a supply schedule, third would be a supply curve. So basically supply can be distinguished or further can be further denied or rather we can talk about discussed in three basic terms. First would be a supply function, a function that expresses the supply term or rather the supply curve of it. Second would be a supply schedule just like the demand schedule that we have we have a supply schedule as well and just like demand curve we have a supply curve as well. So the last one would be supply curve here. Now based on all these three things things will be expressing supply within these three terms itself or rather these three alternative ways. Let's understand each of them in detail. Now a supply function. A supply function of an individual supplier is an algebraic form of expressing his behavior with regard to what he offers in the market at the prevailing prices. So whatever prevailing prices are there on that basis what is the content or rather what is that he is offering in the market is something that we are going to look after. In it, the quantity supplied per period of time is expressed as a function of several variables and the general form of the supply function is Sx. This is known as supply function. This F will be known as function and this Px, Cx, Ntx are certain forms which will be explained right now. So basically this supply form or rather this algebraic form has been mentioned here which we have to cover in the new future or rather we are talking about supply curve and demand schedules in this upcoming videos. So rather for right now this is the algebraic function that we are talking about. Now the next part is supply schedule. A supply schedule is a tabular form that shows different quantities or services that are offered by the form or producer in the market for the sale at different prices at a given time. So just like demand or rather we had like demand schedule whereby at different prices different consumers had this demand thing. So that is what we had discussed when it comes to demand schedule. Similarly on the basis of that or rather similarly on the basis of that line itself we have certain known as demand or other supply schedule that can be of a specific nature whereby we have discussed that on different prices what is the quantity that is being offered by different sellers here or other different producers here thereby it was about consumers here when it comes to supply it will be about producers here this is the major difference that you need to keep in mind the next will be it describes the relationship between quantities supplied of a good in response to its price unit while all non-price variables remains unchanged. So basically everything being constant what is the quantity supplied on a specific price is what that is being explained here in this supply schedule. Now a supply schedule has two columns namely price per unit which is also known as Px quantity supplied per unit that is also known as Sx. So basically the things that we have discussed in the earlier slide whereby Px and Sx were the terms. So Px refers to price per unit and S refers to or rather Sx refers to the specifications of quantity supplied per price or rather price which is supplied or rather the quantity that is supplied per period. This is something that you need to understand. Now the supply schedule is a set of pair of values of Px and Sx. So basically just like demand schedule was a combination or rather a total merger of quantity demanded at the price here. Here supply will be the quantity that is supplied and the specific price per unit. This is the combination that you have to take into picture. Now there are two types of supply schedule namely the first would be individual supply schedule whereby individual demands or rather individual supply of specific producers are taken into consideration when all these individuals are merged together that is known as a market supply schedule or rather we can talk about market supply. The second one would be market supply schedule. 
Now, there is a table here which states that the price per unit of commodity Px, that is Px is the price per commodity, x is the quantity demanded or rather quantity supply. At 10 rupees, they are offering 1000 units. At 20, they are offering 2000, 30, 3000, 40, 4000. And so it goes on to 60 where they are offering 6000 units. Quantity of specific commodity x has been mentioned here. These are the details provided. Now, the next thing that they have mentioned is that when the individual supply schedule is supposed to be done, it relates to the supply of a good or service by one firm at different prices, other things remaining constant or equal. So here the concept of other things remaining constant or equal is the same. It has to be like price has to be a variable factor. Uske alawa jo bhi hai, whatever variable or rather non-variable factors are there, they should remain constant. So hence the line it says that everything else remaining constant if at this price, if the price is increasing, then the quantity demanded or quantity supplied keeps on changing like that. However, in supply we have understood that if the price is increasing, the quantity also goes up. That is a direct relation that they have and not an inverse relation here they don't go opposite side basically so that is what we have understood at 10 rupees they're allowing or rather they're giving out 1000 units at 20 rupees they're allowing 2000 units so if you see the moment 10 rupees is increased the quantity is also increased by 1000 here that is the direct relation that we're talking about and right now we're talking about individual market schedule or rather individual supply schedule now, the table 2.3 shows, the earlier table showed that the price of good X increased from 10 to 60, corresponding supply of the commodity is increased or rather was increased from 1000 units to 6000 units. So basically, with every increase in the value of the price per unit, there is an increase in the quantity here. That is the ratio that you need to make sure or rather you need to understand that part. Now, Talking about market supply schedule, the market supply schedule on the other hand like market demand schedule is the sum of the amounts of goods supplied for sale by all firm or producers in the market. The same thing what individual market schedule or rather individual supply schedule is talking about if you merge them so like there are 10 different consumers and if you merge all the supply individual schedules individual supply schedules all those 10 firms or rather the, those 10 producers here then the merger of that thing will be known as a market supply schedule. So individual includes only specific producers when you merge those specific producers that's when you figure out what is the market supply schedule there now this is the market supply schedule for commodity X now the price per unit of commodity X quantity supplied by a quantity supplied by B market supply will be quantity a plus quantity B at 10 rupees a is giving 1000 B is giving 2000 total will be 3000 here this is this plus this so basically this is what we'll be finding out now this whole thing will be known as market supply and this whole thing will be known as individual supply so both these things have to be kept in mind hence this is the information that is given in a tabular form here now let us assume there are two producers for a good as mentioned in the table A at price 10 per unit producer A sells 1000 units producer B offers 2000 units hence the total market supply at rupees 10 will be 3000 that is 2000 plus 1000 here as a price increases from 10 to 50 the market supply goes from 3000 units to 11000 units this has been also mentioned in the tabular form there. Now, the last part will be supply curve. We have already understood about what do you mean by supply or rather the term three alternate different ways that we have talked about. The first one related to the curve, second one related to the demand schedule or supply schedule and third one relates to the slope of it. Let's understand that part. So supply curve, the curve is a graphical representation of information given in supply schedule. So whatever supply schedule you have, if you put that in a graphical form, that is known as a supply curve the higher the price of the commodity or the product the greater will be the quantity of supply offered by the producer for sale and vice versa and otherwise remaining things constant so other things remaining constant the higher the price of the commodity the higher the supply will be here 
from the producer so these are the three things or rather three different alternative ways that we have studied right now in which you can understand the term or the concept of supply so this is all that we have when it comes to the presentation of three different alternative ways to express the term supply thank you